Well, let's continue with our discussion of uh, composition and uh, recursion. And uh, let's review what um, we um, were doing in the previous screencast. We uh, defined, gave uh, the first definition uh, of um, a primitive recursive function. Let's say that we have a, a natural number, k, and we have a total function, uh, g of uh, x and y. So it's a total function. Total. And uh, we will obtain another function, h, from g via two recurrences. So the base case, h of 0, is equal to k. And uh, h of uh, t plus 1 where t is a natural number, t plus 1, so that's how we define the next value, t plus 1, is equal to um, g of uh, t and uh, h of t. And so you can uh, review the previous screencast on uh, uh, the topic of uh, composition and recursion, where we actually played with a couple of examples. Uh, expanded uh, h for various values. So uh, h is obtained from g by uh, primitive recursion or uh, simpler recursion. So let's prove a theorem, uh, a very nice theorem. Uh, that's theorem 2.1 from chapter 3 in um, uh, the book that we're using for this class, Davis, Way, Occurrence, Gulls, uh, Compatibility, Complexity, and Languages, uh, Fundamentals of uh, Theoretical Computer Science, second edition. second edition, uh, and um, 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 so uh, the proof states that um, uh, let h be obtained, uh, uh, sorry, the theorem states rather, we haven't proved it, uh, so let h be obtained from uh, g by primitive recursion as defined in that definition, we will refer to it from now on as definition 1, and let g be computable, so then h is computable too. So here's the proof. Um, we will prove it in uh, several steps. Uh, first, we'll uh, um, do a couple of very simple lemmas, or sub-proofs, if you will. So the first lemma uh, is, um, well, we need a couple of macros to write the program for uh, theorem 2.1. So uh, the first lemma is that um, f of x equals k um, is computable. So we can write a, um, uh, an L program. Obviously, it is total. Um, uh, and um, uh, now we have to exhibit an L program that shows that that total, prog uh, total function can be computed. That's how we prove that um, it is a computable function. So let's insert some text box and uh, type um, type in the L program. It's a very simple, oops, um, let me do it again. Um, okay, so um, several instructions. Um, y arrow y plus 1 and then y arrow y plus 1, and then um, y arrow y plus 1. And uh, for any natural number k, uh, we uh, have to repeat that instruction k times. Right, and uh, for any natural number, this is a macro that will uh, assign the value of k um, to uh, y. Well, k to the uh, k will become the value of uh, y, and then the second lemma that we need um, to show that uh, uh, h is computable to write the program. Right? Obviously, h is total because g is total, so um, we don't need to show that it is total, but we just have to uh, exhibit the program. So the second lemma in that program that we will write. Uh, shortly, is that um, this macro that checks whether the value of v for some variable v0 um, exists. So in other, in other words, we can 
uh, write a uh, macro uh, for this predicate that checks whether the, a particular value, um, uh, the value of a particular variable is, um, is equal to zero. So how do we uh, write that macro? So let's, let's write this macro. If, um, okay, let me tab it because we will need some labels. If uh, x1 is not equal to zero, then uh, we'll go to a1 label. If, uh, on the other hand, x1 uh, is equal to 0, then we assign the value of 1 uh, to y and uh, exit. Otherwise, we assign the value of 0 to y. So what does this compute? Uh, well, uh, uh, this, uh, this program computes. Um, so what does it compute? The program computes the predicate px such that uh, uh, x is equal to uh, 0 if um, uh, px is equal to 0 if x uh, is not equal to um, is not equal to 0 and 1 if uh, x is equal to 0 Okay, so these are the two things that we needed to, um, uh, uh, to write this program that computes h. So let's write the program that computes h. We already know that h is total, um, so now to prove that it is computable, uh, we have to write a program that will compute h of uh, h of x for any natural value of uh, x. So y uh, is assigned the value of k, uh, z1 is assigned the value of 0. If uh, x1 is 0, then we exit, uh, go to e1. Otherwise, since g is computable, by assumption, we assign uh, the value um, of g uh, uh, applied to z1 and y to y. Then increment uh, z1 by 1 and decrement uh, x1 uh, by 1. And then go to a1 to check whether x1 is, uh, is a 0 yet. Okay, so uh, so th the claim is uh, that uh, this program actually computes. What does it compute? It computes h of x. Okay, and to see this, well, we can make a formal inductive proof, but um, it is it is sort of um, intuitively obvious. So let let's go through um, a couple of uh, a couple of cases to get a feel for how this program uh, works and what it computes. So let's say that x one is equal to zero. Right, the value of x1 is equal to 0, then obviously x1 is equal to 0, we immediately exit with the value of y equal to k. Uh, the first line of the program assigns it, the value of k to y. Okay, and that's what we want, that's the base case. So h of 0 is equal to, is equal to k, and that's what the value of y um, is when uh, uh, x1 is equal to 0. Okay, um, so let me delineate uh, this case, and let's consider a case of uh, uh, when the value of x1 is equal to uh, 1. So when the value of x1 is equal to 1, um, so x1 uh, is not equal to 0, so uh, we assign uh, the value of y uh, to the value of y um, this call to g, and it becomes uh, g of 0 and k g of 0, z1 is equal to 0, that's second line, and the first line, uh, the value of y, current value of y, when that call happens is uh, equal to k. So y is equal to um, k, and that's uh, the value of um, uh, h of 0 plus 1. Because on the next call, um, uh, uh, okay, in the next iteration, the value of x1 uh, will be equal to 0, and so we go to end, e1. And so that's, uh, that's the value of um, uh, h of 0 plus 1. Right, okay, so that's that's what we want. Okay, so let's um, consider one more case. Uh, okay, so let's say that x1 is equal to 2. x1 is equal to 2. Uh, if x1 is equal to 2, uh, then, uh, okay, for first, uh, the value of y um, on the first call to g is equal to uh, g of 0 uh, k. 
then um, z1 becomes one so and uh, x1 is decremented by one and becomes one two minus one is equal to one then the second call um, of g uh, sets the value of y to uh, g of one that's the z1 is equal to one and the current value of y which is uh, g of zero k Okay, and then x1 becomes 0, so we, um, uh, we exit. Uh, so the value of y stays uh, equal to um, uh, uh, g uh, of uh, 1 uh, and uh, g of uh, 0k. So then, okay, so just to formally, uh, g, uh, z1 becomes uh, uh, 2, and then uh, x1 becomes 0, and so that's that's how we exit and so the value of y is equal to this and that is the value of uh, x um, 2 uh, h h of 2 um, which is uh, by definition is h of 1 plus 1 so t in this case is equal to 1 and uh, that uh, by definition is g of 1 h of 1 and h of 1 is equal to uh, g of 0 k so so we can uh, generalize these observations so in general if uh, um, x1 uh, is equal to j right some some natural number j uh, greater than 2 because we considered x1 0 1 and 2 then um, um, y will successfully take on the values of um, takes on the values of h of 0 at each iteration, h of 0, uh, h of 1, uh, uh, h of 2, and uh, all the way up to h of uh, j. Okay, where j is greater than 2.